BioBalance HealthCast, episode 267, When You Have Trouble Sleeping. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counsel. Kathy and I were talking about patients, clients that we have had and common themes that appear when they present themselves. And one of the things that we were discussing was that so many people talk about how they struggle with the ability to go to sleep mm-hmm. and stay at, and or stay asleep. Mm-hmm. And they get really frustrated and really anxious about it when they focus on it as a problem. And it seems to happen to everybody randomly. You know, it's close to the holidays. You've got a big dinner to fix. People are coming in. Where are you going to put them? Who's going to sleep in what room? How are you going to deal with the girlfriend that's visiting or the unmarried? <laughs> so, you know, all this stuff runs through your head and you go to sleep and your mind is racing or you go to bed and your mind is racing. You can't fall asleep. Mm-hmm. Everybody has experience with that. Mm-hmm. Just like everybody has experience with uh, hearing, especially when they first wake up in the morning, if they wake up to music on the radio, mm-hmm. they'll hear a jingle for a commercial or they'll uh, hear a phrase mm-hmm. of a song, and then that will play over and over and over mm-hmm. in their head like 10,000 times. And they're pulling their hair out and they're screaming, Stop it, and it won't stop. And then they're singing it again. They say, I'm not going to do it again. I don't know if you've ever had What that is again. that? Usually it's stress, it's anxiety okay. of one kind or another, and your mind mm-hmm. just locks on something. And so they come would come to me and say, I'm having trouble sleeping. And so one of the things that I learned in, in, in terms of triage and trying to problem solve, what is this, where is it coming from, is to try to make a distinction between emotionally caused stress slash embarrassment uh, slash depression, whatever, emotionally caused upset that impacts your ability to sleep would and mind, physiologically caused. Would yeah. you mind explaining the embarrassment, exactly what you mean by the embarrassment? We know what well, depression is. We know what anxiety is. But the embarrassment's a little different. When you are embarrassed. During the when, day. Yes. When you're in a situation mm-hmm. that embarrasses you, either of your own causing or because something else happened. You know, mm-hmm. you're walking with a full tray in the high school cafeteria and you drop it and spill it all over you and, and people laugh at you. Mm-hmm. And then so you, you psychologically, you try to reconstruct or relive that event mm-hmm. so that you aren't embarrassed. Uh, I remember one time when I was in college and I was in the student senate and we had a charity goal. One of the professors on campus had a wife who was dying of cancer. And so they were asking to help get all the different student groups to mm-hmm. contribute funds to help pay for her treatments and so on. And I was in the uh, post office in the student union talking to a group of students about this. And I was really selling it you know, as a charity, as a good act, as a good thing. And this poor woman and her family. And these People were looking at me, and their facial expressions were really intense, and their bodies were tense, and I thought, man, this is really going well. And then something intruded on my consciousness, and I realized the silence was deadly. And There I, was something wrong, not something right. Exactly, and I turned around, and the woman was standing behind me crying. And I was. <laughs> yeah. I still I think- am. Years later, 50 years later, I can still feel the pain of that embarrassment because in my ignorance— I caused harm to an innocent person that shamed me. I mean, I I still Mm -hmm. feel badly about it. But I didn't sleep for days over that. Mm -hmm. I kept replaying it. I kept imagining it a different way. You try to erase it, rehearse it, reframe it, rephrase it to where you come out with some brilliant rescue of the situation and you're not embarrassed. I call it rumination because it's what cows do. They they chew cud and they kind of throw up and chew it again and they you know and that's what it feels like when you're oh. when you're waking up in the middle of the night and this plays through your head everyone has had that i i don't know that i've I, i've ever talked to anyone who hasn't experienced had an that. experience like that At, yeah and and that has nothing to do with illness this is social or right. a societal kind of judgment on you and it's something that you're trying to work out so that you don't feel so terrible. Right. And so, so. so I start by saying everybody has an example of this. Mm-hmm. Everybody has had this some. But there are those for whom this is a regular and repeated occurrence. And they really begin to stress out and feel depleted and exhausted about mm-hmm. their inability to either go to sleep 
Mm-hmm. Or once they've gone to sleep, the reality that they just keep waking up, and often they wake up in a panic. They wake up soaking wet. They wake up hyperventilating. They wake up afraid. They've heard a noise or a sound, and their heart is racing, and they're adrenalized. Mm-hmm. And it's partly the adrenaline. And, the adrenaline, the epinephrine, uh-huh. and the cortisol, and the cortisol that just zoom up as soon as you had that kind of experience, whether you're asleep or if you're awake, Mm -hmm. experiencing the the hormones and the neurotransmitters are the same. Right. And they wake you up. I mean, it is a physiologic wake up, but it starts with an emotional or a... um, something that actually happens to you, something in real life that that causes you to do that. So that is the source. The right. source is not illness. The source is, is trying to live in this world. Yeah. Well, and, and so there are those among us, though, who are more severely impacted mm-hmm. by anxiety mm-hmm. or depression than others. Yes. And when you, you sprout from those two seeds, anxiety and depression, mm-hmm. your ability to... Uh, control this or overcome this is diminished. So there are medicines that Mm -hmm. help with depression and sleep. There Mm -hmm. are medicines that help with anxiety management and sleep. Mm -hmm. But not everybody is ready or or needs to jump into a medicine as a first Mm -hmm. line of attack. You know, we I agree with that. Because medicines have side effects. Mm -hmm. And you may not want those. You may want the sleep, but you don't necessarily want the side effects. The sleep the sleep medicines may keep for example, sleep medicines may keep you from waking up clearly in the morning and feeling like you can go to work, it makes makes you sleepy all morning. So that decreases your your function during right. the day. Or, and especially with dosage issues like right. men and women, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. they give you a male dose. Right. I have mine, and my body is is bigger than yours, and mm-hmm. so I metabolize it and process it when I'm asleep. You don't. They didn't test Ambien on women. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And so that's why so many women would not be able to take it or would be so sleepy all morning. So we had the side effect of them not testing it on us and giving us a different dose. So if it's possible, we want to learn strategies for fighting this and improving this that don't involve medicine. They're they're free, and all you have to do is follow the rules and follow yeah. uh, what Brett suggests for you to fall asleep and get past all well, of this anxiety. And so, so and one of the first arguments insomnia. that I present is that language matters, and instead of obsessing or ruminating on the inability to sleep, I talk to people about learning to relax. Mm-hmm. If you can do relaxation techniques if you can slow your mind down slow your body down control uh through biorhythms or whatever i mean there are apps you can get on your phone that'll help you do this Mm -hmm. that'll help you breathe if you want to do deep breathing Mm -hmm. the the first place that i try to go is to distinguish the target and the target is for me first of all to help you relax and rest and if you can take a 10 minute period when you're in bed and you're trying to sleep and you can't sleep and you're getting all worked up and just do some of these exercises that I'm going to list in a minute. Uh, and they help relax you and calm you down, slow your heart rate, change your brain uh, rhythms. It's Whether you went to sleep or not mm-hmm. is almost irrelevant. Your body will refurbish itself, it'll regenerate, it'll relax, and it's like a, it's like a mini vacation. So we help people start to learn to control that in limited doses. I can do this for five minutes. I can do this for 10 minutes. It's actually the same way we help them learn to fight addictions. You know, when, uh, like in AA, they talk about one day at a time. Mm-hmm. Actually, one day is too damn long. You know, <laughs> for we, some people, we start yes. with 10 minutes mm-hmm. at a time, 30 mm-hmm. minutes at a time. You resist. I'm not going to smoke a cigarette. I'm not going to take a drink mm-hmm. for 10 minutes uh, and get a timer. And then have a victory celebration, not a drink or a cigarette, but, <laughs> a, but a celebration. Victory. You acknowledge yeah. your success, mm-hmm. and then you go 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, and you stretch that envelope. You do the same thing with relaxation. And you start with a technique called thought stopping, mm-hmm. which is hard to conceptualize, but actually easier to do than most people want to acknowledge. You have to recognize that you are ruminating, that you are obsessing, mm-hmm. and you have to say, stop, and not go there, and refocus your mind somewhere else. So that refocusing, uh, one technique I ask people to do is do your times tables. Remember back in second and third grade <laughs> when you were learning your times tables? Do your times tables. You can't ruminate about not going to sleep while you're doing your times table. Now, it'll intrude. You can mm-hmm. do up to times five or something, and it starts to get harder for some of us uh, to went to school in Arkansas. <laughs> 
And so you do your five times, and you, now you're going to do your six times, and all of a sudden you're like, damn it, I can't sleep. This is not working. Mm-hmm. So you have to learn to refocus your concentration in small increments, in steps. It's baby steps. Mm -hmm. And one of the techniques, I I used to teach people who had more chronic anxiety issues a Mm self-hypnosis ritual. And it's a combination of muscle relaxation and deep breathing and focused thinking. And so what, and I would make a tape for them and I would say, listen Mm -hmm. to this tape, teach yourself to do this, then you don't need the tape, you can do this. But you start with 10 or 15 slow, deep breaths. Mm-hmm. And I would I would do it on the tape for them. I said, now breathe with me, mm-hmm. listen to my voice, do what I'm telling you, concentrate, don't be solving other problems, thinking about other things, but listen to me. And I would tell them, take a deep breath, feel your chest, feel focus mm-hmm. on the air going through your throat, going through your nostrils, going into your lungs, feel the tissues of your lungs expand, be conscious of your body breathing, hold that breath. And I do like, a silent three count mm-hmm. and I would say now push the air out and empty your chest empty it completely push it out slowly don't burst it out in a relaxed way breathe and it, and I would do that like 10 or 15 times breathe in hold it and describe which and gives every, them lots of oxygen and gets rid of their carbon dioxide exactly and, and helps them relax it helps them slow, relax slows down their muscle tension because they're getting oxygen and distracts them at the and it distracts time. them because they're listening to the descriptors mm-hmm. and then I would say I want you to send your mind to your feet. Send your consciousness. Feel your feet right now. Mm-hmm. Do you have socks on? Can you feel them around your ankle? Do you have shoes on? Can you wiggle your toes You're and put feel me to the sleep pressure? Right now. Oh, I'm, I'm not going to go <laughs> through it all. But I'd say what I want you to do is concentrate as you continue to mm-hmm. deep breathe. Concentrate on relaxing your feet. No tension, no hot spots, no muscle strain, nothing. Just feel it drain out into the floor so that your feet are completely relaxed. And then I want you to go from your ankles to your knees. Feel your calves. Feel the muscles in your calves. Feel the skin. And do the same thing. Then from your knees to your hips. Then from your hips to your uh, chest and your arm, your wrist, hands. Work through every segment of the body until they were totally relaxed. And then when they relaxed every segment of their body, and this takes maybe 15 minutes Mm -hmm. if you do it right and you listen to the tape and you follow it, you will be in a relaxed state. You may or may not fall asleep. And they would invariably come in and say, I didn't get finished. I can't (laughs) learn to do this because I keep falling asleep somewhere around my knees and my hip, you know, or my hips and my chest. And it works. And so you gave that to them to fall asleep. Yeah, and I would give it to them. But I would give it to them to learn to do thought stopping Mm -hmm. and refocusing and relaxation. And they they awake from that refreshed Mm -hmm. and rested if they've been successful. And Typically, having slept, and they will wake up anyway. If oh, yeah. self hypnosis oh, is not even something other hypnosis that doesn't yeah. doesn't if keep I, you if asleep. If I hypnotize you and I ask you to do something that goes against the grain of who you are, mm-hmm. you won't do it. You'll just wake up. And if I hypnotize you and then I have a heart attack and die, you won't be permanently in a hypnotized. It's not like the cartoons. You'll wake or up. Any of those yeah, things. no, it's a, you're not going to. No, no, that that's all BS for entertainment purposes, but. So this so this self hypnosis is a way of it's combining deep breathing. Yes. And it's combining and several uh, several of these methods for going to sleep. Right. So uh, one of the other methods which I always used to use when mm-hmm. I couldn't go to sleep before I got old enough to lose sleep because I was aging and losing my hormones was my my anxiety would be so high. I'd come home from a delivery, and I would still be yeah. like, oh, you're like, adrenalized. Yeah, I would. I would uh, do as many sit ups as I could possibly do, and as many push ups as I could possibly do, right. as quiet as I could, because I'm in yeah. the bedroom. I didn't want to wake my husband up, and then and then I'd get back into bed, and then I I was so tired from that I'd go to sleep. Yeah. And and that's not a bad way to do it. it depends no, on who you whatever are. Whatever works. There's what no you single would right want to do, uh, or what works. And and that's often what I would recommend for people that fall asleep but can't stay asleep. If you wake up at two o'clock mm-hmm. and you're looking at your nightstand and the clock is there and you're thinking, "Damn, I only have four hours left till I have to get up," mm-hmm. and I can't fall asleep and I'm not going to be blah, 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 and you obsess, get up out of bed. Mm-hmm. Go in another room. Do something wash different. Wash the dishes. Throw in the wash. What you, something. It, well, you know, so that, that actually does kind of, you get bored. For, for many people. 
What, what, the terminology that I use is self-soothing behaviors. Mm -hmm. What do you do that self-soothes you? you get For some of us, it's watch television. For some, mm -hmm. it's take a shower or a bath. For some, it's exercise. For some, it's bake a cake, make some cookies, vacuum the living room. I mean, everybody will do something else if they give themselves permission mm -hmm. that takes their mind off of, I can't sleep. You and, don't have to just lie there and suffer. And, and you can convince yourself then you have other illnesses, like I've got restless leg syndrome. <laughs> you know, I keep turning and tossing. Uh, and you may have that, yeah, but you may have the odds that. are you don't have that. The odds are you're not relaxing so you can't go to sleep. Mm -hmm. So if there is stress, depression, anxiety, embarrassment, frustration, if you're really frustrated about something that you're trying to accomplish, those things eat at your consciousness, but they also eat at your unconsciousness. And they adrenalize you, and you'll have dreams, uh, you'll have nightmares, you have all kinds of uh, physical starts, jerks and twitches. You know when you're really, really exhausted and you're trying mm -hmm. to go to sleep and your brain releases that little chemical that finally puts mm -hmm. you to sleep? It relaxes all your muscles at one time and you jerk and yes. you wake back up You know, mm -hmm. like you kick the whole bed. For just a second. Yeah, because you wired so tight. Mm -hmm. And when the system switches off and relaxes, all of that wiring relaxes at the same time. It's like spasm. Mm -hmm. so, you feel like you're falling. Yeah. And, and you catch yourself, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's, but that's a, a way to know that you are relaxing. One yes. of the things that I learned as a child from my my mother who didn't like drugs and did like right. behavioral changes or, or making behavioral changes instead was to, um, I would wake up and I would have all these ideas running around in my head. I mean, just tons of ideas, things I wanted to do, things, how to fix this. How to, and so, she, you know, she didn't want to be awakened all the time because I had an idea, which is totally, totally understandable now that I'm a parent. So she put a steno pad by my bed and she gave and put a pen there and said, wake up, write it all down, and then turn the light back off. That's and, so fast. And that works. And that works does, for me. It does work. It's what's fascinating to me is same exact behavior. Same exact methodology, whole different focus of outcome. I mean, we used to use that as a recommendation for dream analysis. When people say, oh, I never dream. Mm -hmm. I don't remember my dreams. I don't dream. Well, you do. And <laughs> one way that you can learn to recognize what mm -hmm. you dream is to take a pen and pencil, write it down, write right, it down away. right away, and then go back to sleep. But to this day, I solve problems, patient problems. I'll go to sleep thinking about a patient who has an unusual physiology or is not presenting like the majority of the people and I'm trying to your tailor unconscious is tracking their medical even care. In your sleep. So I'm tr I'm trying to tailor it to them even though they're so different I'm trying to make them better. I have to I so I I go to sleep thinking about them or th thinking about multiple people <laughs> and then when I wake up I have the answer. Well, but you think of a common set of problems mm -hmm. because you track so many different people all mm -hmm. the time and so if you're sometimes what surfaces for you first when there's, I, I don't know a good example, a flu epidemic coming on <laughs> or something, is that you've seen all these people with this symptomology, and so you know something's going on in the community mm -hmm. of patients I that get you it. serve. I get and a so you, feeling But that from, all gels, and you wake up, and it's like, aha, that's right. I know what this is, or, how or to, I know what I want to do. Or how to handle a problem yeah so it, it it actually so i can go to sleep with confidence knowing that i'm not going to be frustrated by this uh my inadequacy to solve a problem i'm going to be answered in the morning and so that gives me the confidence to go to sleep and know that I, my brain's still working so do you still write it down or does that you don't need that step anymore now you just process it and you wake up and know it's only like once or twice a year i have to wake up and write it down i yeah. now when i wake up i know i know the answer and i knew the problem that i went to sleep thinking about mm -hmm. and so i've trained myself to know the answer and then i can I mean, I've told lots of patients, I, I woke up thinking about you, and, and, oh, yeah. and I email them and say, this is what we're going to do. And, and shockingly, it's, it's got such a good track record of being right. That's amazing. When I have a speech to give or a paper to write or a problem I'm trying to solve, I do segments of it in my sleep. I will wake up and a paragraph will have written itself. I wish itself. I did that. And I remember them. <laughs> and when I wake up the next, when I get up the next morning, I sit down and type it all out. I can't tell you how many times I've had a speech prepared that I was going to deliver somewhere and get up early the next morning. And because of my sleep 
processing of that information. Oh, yeah, information, you've done that before. I've with me. rewrite the whole yeah. darn speech. Yeah, morning. it's all rewritten that throw, morning. Throw the old one away and write the new one. And it's always really good. Well, so, I don't know about that, so but, for those but it's of us how it works. who have to be really productive all the time, working while you're sleeping <laughs> makes you not so... I mean, I used to feel guilty to go to sleep. Guilty sleeping Time's because wasting. I wasn't doing something productive. Yeah. I mean, even as a kid. So then, of course, I solved that problem by never sleeping because I was an OBGYN, and so that and that had its consequences, and that and and that's something that that you is, can't afford. Your patients can't afford. Right. Your behavior you then bind. makes you ill. Yeah. And you and there was nothing you can really do about it. Lots of people who are in the medical field right. have a problem with this and and we'll be talking about that in our uh, next podcast. Right. We we need to wrap this one up just to summarize very quickly. Um, you need to learn certain skills and practice them. One of the skill sets you need to learn is sleep habituation preparation. Uh, you have to prepare yourself as, as a physical habit sequence to do the same things before you go to bed. Whether that's brush your teeth, take a shower, do 10 brush setups, have a glass of milk, have a glass of wine and let, read some poetry, whatever it might be that you do before you get in bed. It's kind of like we, we work with kids with ADD problems mm -hmm. to teach them to have a disciplined approach to study. You do your homework at this desk in this room. You don't do it laying on the couch in the basement. You don't have the TV turned on. You don't have the stereo turned on. You don't do that and play a video game or talk on the phone. You come here, you sit down, set a timer, do your work. That's a different conversation for a different day. But you habituate your pattern. Mm -hmm. You teach your body because your body will learn, oh, we're getting ready to go to bed. Mm -hmm. Your unconscious will learn. We're getting ready to go to bed. Chilling out. Then you do some of the exercises, the thought stopping. You don't ruminate. Mm -hmm. You don't obsess. And you do meditation, deep breathing, relaxation, yoga, if that mm -hmm. helps you, exercise, if that helps you, uh, get a pencil and paper. Anything that works is okay. Try it. If it works for you, then that's a success. If mm -hmm. it doesn't work for you, it's not a failure. It's just a different strategy that you need to try. Right. So once you get the mindset that I'm so screwed up I can't even go to sleep, then you're going to be more <laughs> agitated. It, and it, it feeds on it. And that will slide you into the other division, which is the medical physical issue for people that can't sleep. And we're going to talk about that in our next podcast. So please come back for that. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.